Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alfred, and this is a game called Rogue. Um, and what you're watching is, as you might have seen, a series that I'm calling Friday Night Roguelikes, for some reason. Um, Rogue is an old video game that went on to inspire a massive portion of other games. But I'm going to jump in. This is me. Hello, Alfred. Welcome to the Dungeon of Doom. So, in case you're not sure what you're looking at, I'm that little yellow guy there. That E is a monster. The orange uh, walls represent a room, and the green dots are the floor. But it looks like we might have a fight on our hands. The emu doesn't hit you. We're fighting an emu. Truly a formidable foe. All right. So this is a D&D &D game, plain and simple. The emu doesn't hit us. So I'm going to hit space to advance the turns. You swing and hit the emu. More. You defeated the emu. All right. So this is our little environment here. So going out into these rooms, we'll start to explore the dungeon. We have explored this room fully because we spawned here and it's lit. Rooms that aren't lit, you won't see. Anyway, my goal here is to go back and examine all the roguelikes. S. Looks like he's not giving up without a fight. You barely miss the snake. Alright, well if it's a fight that this snake wants, it's a fight he'll get. The snake doesn't hit you. You've injured the snake. You have defeated the snake. Alright. So now we can freely explore this room. And there's this on the floor, which is gold. We found 12 gold pieces. So this is a good time to talk about our stats. Down there is our hits, or hit points, which is 12. So we can take 12 damage. Our strength, which is 16. Um, there's no class system in this game. Truly uh, a red's, you know, dream. That was a lame joke. Carly would have workshop that more. We got 12 gold, which is one way to measure score, and we got five armor. There's a bee in this room. So that little symbol is food, because we do have food. We also have an inventory. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there's our inventory. We have plus one ring mail, armor class five. We've got a mace. We've got a short bow and some arrows. And we have some food. So we just picked up two rations of food and six gold. We might be able to escape. <laughs> there was a snake coming. Did you guys see that? More food and more gold. <laughs> it's the snake. Snake swings and hits you. So we just took two damage. You barely missed the snake. The snake hit you. Uh-oh. The snake scored an excellent hit on you. Oh, boy. The snake hit you. You missed the snake. The snake swings and misses you. Score an excellent hit on the snake. The snake misses you. You've injured the snake, you've defeated the snake. Oh boy, that was kind of embarrassing. So yeah, it's a D and Gee game, and it's randomly generated every single time. And death is a constant and common. So we will probably be doing this a lot. The purpose of the show is to go back and examine old roguelikes. And this is not the first one, but it's literally called Rogue, and the genre is called Roguelike. It's named after it. So let me see here. E? Yes. So you hit the E button to eat. So I ate some of my food. And now I will wait. And as you can see, my hit points are going back up. So this is a dead end. I seem to remember... No. Oops. <laughs> no, now you know that I'm not... <laughs> Doing this for real.
Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, this game is rather old. The bat. The bat has found us. Oh, it's go time. It's bat time. All right, we're fighting this bat. You don't hit the bat. The bat doesn't hit you. All right? You missed the bat. The bat misses you. You don't hit the bat. So the bat's trying to get away now. You barely missed the bat. Bat swings and misses you. You hit the bat. You defeated the bat. All right. See, enemies are all randomly generated as well. I'll come back for that. Well, I guess it has to, you know, can't be helped. You don't hit the Kestrel. The Kestrel scored an excellent hit on you. Oh, right. Hold on. I have to play the animation. <laughs> One second. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Kestrel swings and hits you. You miss the Kestrel. The Kestrel misses you. You miss the Kestrel. The Kestrel scored an excellent hit on you. You barely miss the Kestrel. The Kestrel barely misses you. Miss the Kestrel. Kestrel hits you. Oh, boy. You miss the Kestrel. The Kestrel hit you. You swing and hit the Kestrel. You defeated the Kestrel. That was very dangerous. Oh, here comes a snake. Do, 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 do. So you, you notice that we can only see the snake whenever he's like actually on us. You don't hit the snake. Snake misses you. Don't hit the snake. The snake scored an excellent hit on you. Uh oh. You missed the snake. The snake has injured you. You hit the snake. You defeated the snake. And achieved the rank of guild novice. So now we're a guild novice. Cool. And as you can see, our health is now larger. It's another bat. So yeah, it's it's very much a D&D game. There's a bunch of invisible dice rolls happening at all times. So this is loot. You have a scroll titled Yav Sees Pomboj B. Come on, bat. The bat doesn't hit you. Scored an excellent hit on the bat. You defeated the bat. Nice. And we got 87 gold. Cool. Actually, I'm going to wait for a second. Yeah, all right. So waiting will burn your food. Well, everything actually burns your food. Oh, it's another emu. Emu hit you. Swing and miss the emu. Emu doesn't hit you. You miss the emu. Emu barely misses you. You swing and miss the emu. The emu's injured you. You barely miss the emu. The emu swings and misses you. You barely miss the emu. Oh boy, you miss the emu. The emu hits me. Scored an excellent hit on the emu. We've defeated the emu. All right. So yeah, as we get further age. Uh oh, that could be trouble. So if I hit period of wait here, we can see that the hobgoblin, because you know that's what it is will advance on me. Let's go. The hobgoblin swings and misses me. Let's go, hobgoblin. All right. Let's go. You barely miss it. It hit me. You've injured the hobgoblin? You defeated the hobgoblin. All right. So, Rogue is a game completely randomly generated. It's all made to, you know, emulate the feeling of a and d adventure, which it is. Six gold. Which is, you know, why we have hit points. There's the stairs. Okay. So, these stairs need to lead to the next floor, which is here. 43 gold. A tin wand. Um, wands are for magic. I usually don't fiddle with magic in this game. We are here looking for the amulet of Yendor. Hobgoblin injured. Whoa, that was a big hit. You hit it? Defeated the hobgoblin. And achieved the rank of apprentice. All right. So your level, I believe, goes up based on... Based on your enemies. 
No. Wait, never mind. Apprentice and Guild Novice are the levels. Level is the floor you're on, I believe. Oh. Well, there's the next floor. So yeah, I can actually go down that floor already. But there might be stuff on this floor that I need. But yeah, as I said, the purpose of the show is to examine this ancient, ancient video game and other games in the genre. Because this Rogue might be the most ripped off game ever. Another hob. Um... I'm going to miss you. You barely miss it? It hit me. Ooh, boy. You've injured and defeated the Hobgoblin. All right. Because, like, everyone has, you know, started saying that, like, Dark Souls is the Dark Souls of Dark Souls. You know, any hard game is now a Dark Soul. Ooh, okay, so that's a dark room. So I'll come back in there when I'm not talking. You know, every game that's hard is now a Dark Soul, like, you know, a Souls-like mechanic. Hobgoblin. Uh Uh-oh. Ooh, all right. So yeah, they're very tough, even though they have low hit points. Another bat. Hit and defeat the bat. Nice. You have a scroll titled Sukvar Vik. 71 gold. But the genre of roguelike is still... Oop. You've injured and defeated the Hobgoblin. Nice. The genre of roguelike is still called that. You know, it's still called a roguelike. Another hub. You swing and miss. It's injured me. Injured. Defeated hobgoblin. Nice. Dominant. All right, cool. Excellent hit on the bat. Bat swings and hits you. You miss the bat. Swings and hits. Oh, boy. Miss the bat. Defeated bat. And achieved the rank of journeyman. Nice. Yeah. So dark rooms are rooms that aren't fully lit. You have a gray potion. There's a button that you can do to get at the... Oh, you feel less confused now. Oh, I stepped on a trap. (laughs) Yeah, so there's a button that you can hit to start like digging at walls. But I forget what it is. Oh, boy. Yeah, and I keep getting uh, <laughs> messed up by that. Oh, what is that? So yeah, dark rooms, you can figure out where the walls are, but you won't see what's in them. And you can remember where traps are. Okay, cool. That's the end of it. You feel less confused now. Don't hit the Kestrel. Kestrel doesn't hit me. You've injured and defeated the Kestrel. Nice. So, because um, the enemies are all letters, every enemy has to be something A through Z. Ooh, big room. Right in the middle, too. See, everything has to be something A through Z. So, sometimes it's very logical ones, like zombie or bat. Jeez, what is that? Okay, I'll go look it up off off camera. Um, I'm not going to like do a full LP in this game. Nice. Defeated the Kestrel. A clear potion. Oh, by the way, so what every potion and spell does is also randomly generated. A scroll titled XOF. Safer. Uh, Zofwick Juzbon Naz. A scroll titled Zip Fuf Sokbun Vug. So what all those do is randomly generated as well. See, I'm now on level three. That could be trouble. You scored an excellent hit on the ice monster. Oh, I guess it wasn't trouble. But I'll play the animation anyway. Blah. It's the ice monsters aren't usually that easy. But I kind of got lucky. Okay, so I figured out the command. It's search. S to search, I shouldn't say. The bat injured me. Missed the bat. It hits me. You don't hit the bat. It misses me. You missed the bat. It hit me. 
Oh, man. You get a feet of the vet. And it's in a dark room. Oh, well, there's the stairs. So, yeah, I could just go on the stairs, like, all all day. Another ice monster. You don't hit it. Swing and defeat it. Okay. So, yeah, I could just, like, skip down the stairs as soon as I find them. And it might help me beat the game quicker. Get the bat. Excellent. Nice. But um, the thing with that is it means that I will miss out on any loots that might be in here. And there might be some good ones. Um, this game is kind of a weird control scheme. You do not use the mouse at all. It's pretty standard for uh, roguelikes of this era and style. That there's just no mouse use at all. Oh, it's an orc. That's not good. All right. Orc time. You miss the orc. The orc doesn't hit me. You barely missed the orc. It's injured me. You scored an excellent hit on the orc. It misses me. You hit the orc. You defeat the orc. Orcs uh, can be pretty dangerous. I wonder where it came from. So I'm hitting the S key to search here. I'm trying to figure out what exactly I can... If anything. Oh. Well, a bat showed up, ran up on me. And I'm hungry now. So I'll hit E to eat food. And it tasted good. That's good. All right. So I guess that that actually is a dead end and I can't search anymore. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to hit Q to quaff a potion. Yuck. Why would you want to drink that? I'll try this one. You feel very sick. All right. Oh, it made my strength 13 instead of 16. That's not good. So, yeah, there are bad, there are good and bad potions, and really the only way to know is to just, like, test them. You missed the emu. Okay, I saw ES, and I was like, what is that? So my strength being lower means that I... Oh, man, this is just a... Hail Mary monsters there. My strength being low. Well, there's the <laughs> there's the next one. Anyway, my strength being lower means that I have much less of an ability to attack things. You have two scrolls titled Zofwick. Oh, that means that I can R to read scroll and try it. F. As you read the scroll, it vanishes. It is an identify scroll. Um cool. Let's identify the tin wand. A wand of magic missiles, three charges. Oh, nice. So yeah, um, some of the loot that you can find will help you identify. Uh, some of the scrolls are identify. They'll just tell you what other items are and what they do. Hmm. So yeah, it's basically just more of this, you know? Not that that's a bad thing. It's a very classical D&D adventure. Hmm. Oh, a dagger. Nice. So daggers aren't very useful, but you can throw them. With T, left, and then I'm going to throw this potion. You hit the emu. The flash shatters. It hits me. Cool. So yeah, that might have been a waste, but whatever. But yeah, that was to show that you can throw things. Um, throwing daggers is sometimes much better than actually using them, since they're kind of weak weapons. And because my mace is pretty pimping. So here I'm, again, trying to search. And sometimes I'm never sure if it's an actual matter of it's a real dead end. Oh. Where was the emu? Oh, okay. There's a snake. Cool. Nice. Castrol. Oh, boy. There we go. What? A rattlesnake. Oh, rattlesnakes are really bad. Let's go. 
Okay. Rattlesnake. Game time. It's injured me. You feel a bite in your leg and feel weaker. This could be the end of it. Um, rattlesnakes have the ability to poison your character and drain their strength. So as you can see, my strength is now just 12. Excellent hit. It's injured me. I feel weaker. You don't hit it. It barely misses me. So every time the rattlesnake hits you, it has a chance to poison you. It's not a low chance. And every time that happens, you barely miss it. It misses me. You've injured it. You defeated it. It's you the rank of adventurer. Oh, God. Missed the orc. It doesn't hit me. Missed the orc. It injured me. Hit the orc. Defeated the orc. Okay. Whew. That was kind of a another orc, huh? Oh, uh, it's gone then. So yeah, um, another Kestrel. What do I have on me? Let's just read one of these advantages. What do you want to call it? Um, I just teleported, so teleport. It hits me. You feel less confused. Oh, wait, the confusion spell. Right. Right, right, right. Okay, I'll have to remember that I might have named that wrong. H. Hobgoblin. Don't hit it. Doesn't hit me. Miss it. It hits me. You miss it. It scored an excellent hit on me. Uh oh. You miss it. <gasps> no. Well, that's the end of our first attempt on Rogue. I fought Alfred Fottle Rattlesnake. And got got. So uh, I've actually done quite a few of these. Because there's quite a lot of enemies. Oh boy. Well. That's certainly a good first start. I am going to be playing this game for an hour or so. Um... I'm going to take a quick break, but the video, it won't matter for you guys, so I'll see you guys in a second. And we're back. I just went back to check all the recordings and noticed that I sniff before every new recording starts, and that might drive me crazy if I have to hear that while I'm editing, and it might have already driven you guys crazy. <laughs> um... But I, there, yeah, I just did it again. I'm a little sick still. Um, I'm not in quarantine for no reason. I know I say it's a lot, but it's because I want people who are just joining to know exactly where I'm sitting right now. I'll name this guy Lawyer. Hello, Lawyer. Welcome to the Dungeons of Doom. So, same deal. Still looking for the Amulet of the Endor. Kestrels. Let's go. So I'm going to um, record this attempt in its entirety. And possibly the third attempt. And then I will only start recording attempts that are much closer. Well, there's the next floor. So let's look at... So let's see what this is like. We're on the next floor now. So this is what this game is like when you are just completely non-combatant. Of course, this has high risk of me eating sandwich in between two monsters. So I wouldn't recommend doing it. But, you know, it can have benefits. We now have a red potion. And we're on level three. And you notice that Guild novice or anything isn't even in the corner. We haven't even leveled up yet. We don't even have like a name. I mean, we're lawyer, obviously. Nice. Cool. All right. Oh, all right. Let me just stealth my way over to here. We now have plate mail. Okay. So I believe that's W. No, W is wield. <laughs> Uh, actually, take this out. So now we have a short bow. 
and with T, we can throw arrows. I believe this is how it works. Let's put this back on. Emu injured me. You missed the emu. It misses me. You miss it. It did a good hit. Oh, man, this is dumb. This is not good. You've injured it. You've defeated it. All right, so capital W. Oh, boy. All right. Um, what's the button to take off my clothes? Actually, let's just... Let's get to the next floor. Okay, cool. Um... R is for rings, right. You know, this works, actually. So we drop this on the floor. Then hit W. Nope. Capital W. And then we put on the plate mail. Oh, boy. So uh, it was cursed armor. Which I think means... Yeah, we can't take that off. Um, it didn't actually change our set, but yeah, cursed items will make it so you have less stats. It's pretty dank. All right. Other than that, that isn't too, too bad. Um, there is, I believe there is a way to take cursed armor off besides death, but. I don't know if we'll even get to that on this character. Especially because now, even if I do find better armor, I won't be able to put it on because uh, my character is cursed armor now. Um, I think pretty much anything, any item in this game can be quit, uh, cursed, any equipable item at least. So you can get stuck holding a dagger, you can get stuck holding a mace, rattlesnake. It misses me. There's two in a row. Jeez, dude. You don't hit it. It doesn't hit me. You miss it. It injured me. You feel weaker. Oh, no. You hit it. It misses me. You defeated it. And we leveled up. You hit it. It hits me. You don't hit it. It hits me. It injured me. I hit it. Well. All right. Shoot. Well, that's the end of lore. Uh, <laughs> I didn't anticipate that to be... Well. Oops. Hey, and I'm back. This one's going to be named... Yulp. Hello, Yulp. So you actually can see the time that I'm recording this based on where I'm actually... Oh, Lord. <sighs> you can, Sorry about that. You can actually see the time that I'm recording this based on the little number in the right. Kestrel. Nice. So yeah, as I mentioned, I'm going to play this for about an hour, um, and I'm going to do that once a week for at least eight weeks, maybe ten. You now have a scroll titled Kick Grip Tefox Kick, and we got food. Because yeah, this is a like... For whatever reason, this is still, like, just the, the title, you know? People still, like, name this one as the the genre starter. We have a Violet Potion. Hobgoblin. Uh-oh. So I'm going to do... Uh... Ooh, nice. So I'm going to do another run... After this, um, I'm going to record this run in its entirety. Oh, well. I just wanted to do that.
yeah, so I'm going to record this one in its entirety, and then I will just record some miscellany uh, and read the Wikipedia article for this. Ooh, it's a ring. A lapis lazuli ring. R? Wait, R is read. Well, let's just see what this is. It vanishes. It's identify scroll. Oh, well, now we can identify that ring. Aggravate monster. All right, I guess I'm not putting it on. Aggravate monster makes all the monsters stronger. You can put it on on purpose if you want to make the game harder, but I don't. That was good. That scroll saved me from putting that ring on. That ring might even be cursed. 6-5 gold. All right. Another scroll. Lirhol Sag. Eh. Dark room. Interesting. Wow, big dark room. And that probably leads here. Oh, it, this one leads here. And a snoke. See, in the early levels, you can pretty much, you know, snakes and stuff like that is a valid challenge. And this leads... Oh. And we got apprentice rank. Nice. Okay. Cool. So yeah, um, enemies are slightly randomized, but not completely. Two scrolls titled Kasem the Thick... Ha. Missed the bat. Bats are pretty easy to kill. Um, yeah, that's a pretty good. That's a pretty good floor. So yeah, what floor you get to is um, what floor you get to is a measure of your score, as is gold. Uh, I don't believe that there's a shop in this game. Orc, that's not good. So orcs, you may have noticed, actually hunt for money. Injured the orc, defeated orc, nice. Orcs actually go for money. Um, they're greedy monsters. There's a couple others like them. But uh, I think you might be able to drop gold. Oh, yeah, there you go. Searching revealed that. Ice monster. Cool. And a blue potion. Kestrels. All right. This is going much better. I must say. Wow, I just stopped the hobgoblin. Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, I'm hungry. So let's eat one of my rations. Tastes good. So there isn't a uh, way out here. So what I have to do is search by hand all of them I might I just might not even be like lingering long enough on any one of them which would be pretty annoying of all the unlucky spawns cuz there's always going to be another another way down you know And, you know, I guess I... Oh, zombie. Where did you come from, brother? You know, I don't like hobgoblins. And we are journeymen now. Nice. I like regular goblins. Emu. Nice. The so emus and bats are, you know, very Goomba-esque. Just, they're not really threats in the classical sense. Just more in the theoretical sense. They're only really dangerous in very, very large groups. Or after a monster like a rattlesnake that weakens you. Hmm. Oh, well, while I was trying to search, Snake ran up on me. But we defeated him. I guess I wouldn't be there, because that's the corner. Jeez. It's kind of a pain in the butt. I might just reset, honestly. This is a little embarrassing. Yeah, I'm going to reset. Uh, consider this guy dead.
Hi, everyone. We're in postcom now. Something of a uh, unprecedented thing from, well, my Let's Plays, at least. Uh, I don't really do a lot of postcom, but there wasn't a lot to do here, so I decided, as I was playing, that I would just do it in postcom and read the Wikipedia article for Rogue. Since uh, ASMR is, you know, kind of a focus of mine, a little bit. Rogue, also known as Rogue Exploring the Dungeons of Doom, is a dungeon-crawling video game by Michael Toy and Glenn Wickman, and later contributions by Ken Arnold. Originally developed for 80s, uh, 80s Unix-based machines as a freely distributed public domain software. It was included in the Berkeley Software Distribution Operating System. Commercial boards of the game for a range of personal computers are made by Toy Wickman and John Lane under the company AI Design. In Rogue, just skimming now, in Rogue, characters control players control a character as they explore several levels of a dungeon as they seek the amulet of Yendor located in the dungeon's lowest level. PC must fend off an array of monsters that roam the dungeon. Along the way, they can collect treasures that help them offensively or defensively, such as weapons, armor, potions, scrolls, and other magic items. It's turn-based, taking place in a square grid represented by ASCII or other fixed character sets, allowing player to have time to determine best mood to survive. Rogue implements perm permadeath as a de design choice to make each action by the player meaningful. Should the PC lose all their health from combat or other means, the character is dead and the player must restart a brand new character and cannot reload a save state. The levels are procedurally generated on each playthrough, so no game is the same as the previous one. It was based off of text-based computer games, uh, the 71 Star Trek game, which is kind of odd, and Colossal Cave Adventure in 76, along with High Fantasy from D&D. Because, yes, it's very much a D&D game. Uh, Tony Wickman, both students at University of California, Santa Cruz, worked together to make their text-based but text-based game, but looked to incorporate elements of procedural design Procedural generation to create a new experience every time the user played the game. Yada, yada, yada. Popular in the 80s among college students and other computer savvy users in include, part due to its inclusion in uh, that operating system. It inspired programmers to develop a, a number of similar titles, titles such as Hack and Moria. Although Troy, Wickman, and Arnold hadn't released a source code, so these were just... Uh, so these were, like, made on their own. A long lineage of games grew from these titles. Rogue wasn't the first dungeon crawler with procedural generation, but it did introduce a subgenre of roguelike RPGs. Uh, gameplay. In Rogue, the player assumes the role of a typical adventurer of early fantasy role-playing games. They start at an uppermost level of an unmat dungeon with myriad monsters and treasure. The goal is to fight one of the ways to the bottom level. Retrieve the amulet of Yendor, Rodney spelled backwards, and ascend to the surface. So if I had actually gotten to the bottom, I would have uh, then had to go up to the top. Monsters and levels become progressively more difficult to defeat. Until it's retrieved, they can't, the player can't return to earlier levels. In the original text-based versions, all aspects of the game, including the dungeons, the player character, and monsters, are represented by letters and symbols in the ASCII character set. Monsters are represented by capital letters, such as Z for zombie, and there, accordingly there are 26 varieties. This type of display makes it appropriate for a non-graphical terminal, so you can actually play this on something that doesn't have a graphics card at all. <laughs> Later ports of Rogue apply extended character sets to the text user interface, or replace it with graphical tiles. And then they mention some of the controls. I already talked about those, how, like... It's all on the keyboard, so Q is to quaff a potion, and it can't be D for drink because D is already drop. E is eat. W is wield a weapon. Each dungeon level is a grid of three rooms by three rooms. Dead end hallways sometimes appear. Lower levels can include a maze in place of a room. And it's all randomly generated. So yeah, Toy took interest in the text-based Star Trek game, which represented space combat through characters on screen, and required the players to make strategic decisions each turn. Toy took to learn programming to recreate this game and on other computer systems, including just some other computers. Uh, Colossal Cave Adventure was the next one. 
And then they just started getting stuff from uh, D&D. Oh, the reason that the player symbol looks like that is because it was originally the at symbol. Because it was where the player is at. Initially, um, they had the ability to save like properly. Uh, but that just led people to quitting uh, when they died and then loading the save. That's not what they wanted. So now your save is deleted on death. Um, this is what I wanted to... Uh, this is what I wanted to read. Around 1982, Troy's, Toy's attention to Rogue and computer games caused him to suffer poor academic performance and he was kicked out of the school shortly finding employment at the University of California, Berkeley, in their computer lab. Toy took the rogue code with him to continue development. Wickman, still enrolled at U uh, UCSC, continued to help develop rogue for a time, such as adding armor elements, but the logistics over working the distance made it difficult for him to fully keep up, and he let Toy fully take over development. Which is just... Man... <laughs> uh, later they started to work on other things like putting a happy face for the player character uh, they took steps to avoid potential copyright issues with, with TSR which was the people that owned D&D &D. Uh, so they used to have kobolds in that game in, in Rogue they do not anymore Um, it's been ported, ported to basically every computer ever, and now that it's just on uh, DOSBox online, which is how I'm playing it, you can also just do it as well, <laughs> like from anything that really connects to the internet and has a keyboard. Um, automated play. This, this one's interesting. Because the input and output of the game is over a terminal interface, it's easy in Unix to redirect output to another program. One program, Rogomatic was developed in 81 to play and win the game by four graduate students in the comp side department at Carnegie Mellon University in Pittsburgh. In a test during a three-week period in 83, Rogomatic had a higher median score than any of the 15 top rogue players at the university and the University in Te Texas in Austin, uh, found the Amulet of Yendor in a passageway on the 26th level, continued onto the surface, and emerged in the light of day. Uh... Ken Arnold liked, said that he liked to make sure that every subsequent version of Rogue had a new feature in it that broke Rogomatic, but it remains a noted study in expert design, uh, expert system design, and led to the development of other game playing programs called bots. So yeah, that's one of the first bots. And now I will go read the Rogomatic wiki page. So it's Rogomatic. It's not Rogue. It's Rogomatic. It's a bot developed in 81 to play and win the computer game Rogue by four grad students. Uh, des described as a belligerent expert system, it performs well when tested against expert Rogue players, even when in the game. Because uh, all information in Rogue is committed to the player via ASCII test, Rogomatic has automatic access to the same information a human player has. It's still the subject of some scholarly interest. A 2005 paper said it differs from traditional expert systems and that has the ability to work within a dynamic environment. For example, the randomly generated terrain and adversaries. More importantly, the system was designed to operate in spite of limited information, recording and integrating knowledge with, about the environment as it's discovered. One of the authors would go on to write the Lycos Source engine. Uh, Lycos is Greek for wolf, I believe. See, it's one of the first bots, which is really, really neat. Like, it's on. That's honestly such a cool idea to me. So yeah, Rogue is not the first randomly generated game, but it is definitely like the codifier of a lot of those ideas. But yeah, Legacy, because of Rogue's popularity, in colleges in the '80s, other users sought to expand or create similar games to Rogue. As neither Toy Wickman nor Arnold released the source code, these efforts generally required the new program is to craft the core elements from scratch to mimic rogue so instead of just making a hack for rogue you had to make a new game that just had the mechanics of rogue there are multiple titles that tried this but the most significant ones were moria and hack both of which i'm going to play 
Mori and Hack got uh, similarly popular. Hack is now not as well remembered as NetHack. And Moria also evolved into Angbad. Or possibly Angbad. Um, Toy Wickman and Arnold reunited on stage for the first time in 30 years in an event called Roguelike Celebration at San Francisco in 2016. So there's this thing that I wanted to mention. Um, it might be on the wiki page for Moria. Moria, by the way, naturally comes from uh, Tolkien's Moria, the place of the dwarves. Yeah, so on the wiki page for Moria, there's a tree. There, there's a um, picture of a tree. And the tree branches into, you know, many different branches as trees do. Sorry, I'm doing a bad job of verbally explaining a picture but the trunk of the tree is rogue and then it splits into moria and hack and hack becomes net hack and mori becomes angbad and then there's other splits where rogue splits into lauren and omega and adam and angbad becomes zangbad but yeah these all became their own unique thing um so moria is very very similar to rogue except there is now a character creator um you may have noticed that when i started this game all you have is the ability to punch in your name and that does basically nothing i don't even think it generates a seed like it would be kind of cool if your name generated a seed but it's not even that but moria actually has um very very classical D D races so elf half elf halfling gnome dwarf half orc etc etc uh, and then you also pick a class, paladin, ranger, rogue, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's actually uh, a use for money in Moria as well. So it's named after Moria, and uh, the final boss of the game is to go kill a Balrog. So instead of just finding the amulet, you go kill a Balrog. And uh, then that went on to inspire Angbad, which is far closer to Moria. Um, Angbad is another thing from Tolkien's lore. And the boss of Angbad is Morgoth, who is, you know, the evil god in Lord of the Rings. And then that spun off into Mangbad, Zangbad, and few uh, several others. Um, and then there's all the hacks. But that's getting a little far. The end of this clip is coming up so i will let you guys go back to past connor or current me all right hey everyone i'm back in live commentary um this is further than i've ever actually gotten so i decided to drop back into live com uh which might cause some problems because i don't know how far the recording uh of me reading the wikipedia article for rogue is going to go yet oh shoot so this is an equator Oh, by the way, uh, hold on. Uh, do the equator animation. But yes, as I was saying, equators rot your armor away. They rust your armor. So now my armor class is only four, which is not good. What did I just get? Yep, hold on. Uh, let's try the sapphire ring. Right. Oh, God, what's the command? I guess it is D. D, C, P, C. Now, I don't know what that did, actually. But yeah, this is the new best attempt that I've ever had. Ever, actually. Um, you, can, you might be able to see my previous attempts in the last few, uh, in the last few death screens, just because, you know, it stores them all. But this is the furthest I think I've ever gotten. Uh, which means that this is probably going to be the last attempt. We got centaurs. Ooh, I, actually, I can play the centaur animation now. Do do. All right. So yeah, centaurs aren't too dangerous. They're just stronger monsters. Um, equators are really, really bad because they rot your armor away. So now I'm much easier to hit, which is just not good at all. Um, zombies were in the. Oh, scale mail. 
what is the I guess D and then my armor where no that's wield jeez okay capital W L so yeah now I technically have better armor because it's not enchanted oop quagga oh I already played the quagga animation right Two scrolls of identify. Nice, nice, nice. Actually, let's get that going. Jay. Um, and let's figure out what the hell I'm actually wearing. See? See invisible. Interesting. Okay. Let's read another one. Identify. Um hmm. Look at the agate ring. A ring of searching. Okay. Both of those are quite all right. See, as you can see, um, jeez. <sighs> as you can see, tough, uh, oh boy. Right, okay. Um, I want to drop these darts. I don't really care about darts. Uh, you can throw them, but I don't really need to. So I think in the uh, time lapse, I only killed a zombie and a leprechaun. Oh boy, your armor weakens. Okay, I need to, this is not good. Okay, now I can hit them one at a time. This could be the end for me. Jeez, and another trap. Goody gumdrops. So I leveled up to fighter and then warrior. Then I got another ring. Cool. So, hmm. I'm kind of glad with, I'm kind of happy with the rings that I have right now. So, and I don't really want to take them off because I might just put on like a cursed ring that ruins my stats. Quagga. Wow, level 10. A strange white mist makes you fall asleep. You can move again. So what that just happened there is you just skipped a whole bunch of turns. A nymph. Oh, a nymph. All right, back to nymph fighting. Defeated the nymph. Oh, okay. Can't carry anything else. All right, I guess I will drop... Actually, wait. Let me get rid of some of these. What does this do? Vanishes. You hear monocle laughter in this sense. Oh, I think that's a rage scroll. A scroll that makes everyone mad. Um, yeah, let's go through these all. Your armor goes faintly. Armor buff. So if only I'd put on my actual... And another solid digestion ring. So if you put on two of those, it actually just stops your digestion at... at like at all oh dear okay cool let's start quaffing some you can't move you can move again okay so that was petrification you feel stronger Ooh, that's good i needed that i actually needed the hell out of that oh my cat's getting fed uh my cat has an auto feeder by the way my cat just got a uh a huge upgrade we just got him a cat tree cat tower he is living it up. He loves that damn thing. A leprechaun. Ooh, now I can play the leprechaun animation. That's good. So leprechauns steal your cash if you don't kill them quick enough. Your purse feels lighter. So yeah, he took my money. Bastard. Can't trust the Irish for nothing. I would know. I'm an Irishman myself. Rattlesnake. Uh-oh. Okay, cool. So I learned that I was actually doing the search thing wrong. I was holding the button down instead of mashing it, which you're supposed to do. Oh, there's the stairs. Oh, 
Okay. Okay, so this probably connects to that room up there. Oop, gold. A Yeti! Oh, hell yeah, Yetis! Okay, defeated the Yeti. Yeah, then this is the connection point there. So this probably loops around to here then. 96 gold. Cool. Dead end room. Potentially. Oh, an equator. Uh oh. And an orc right after, huh? Man, I'm going to be walking out of this dungeon in a barrel. Wow. That was a lot of enemies. Is that just two orcs right there? That was kind of crazy. Of course, it's very dangerous to do the thing that I do where you just like hold down the button and just drive yourself because uh, in dark rooms like this, you can only see one in front of you. Rattlesnake. Uh-oh. Jeez. I'm taking hits all over the place. I've got enough hit points that I feel okay with wearing this armor still. Um, Equators, by the way, I believe they're just a D&D &D monster. Um, also, you know, more commonly known as a rust monster. Wow. I'm making good progress. So this is probably going to be the last attempt, even if I die in like a second. Uh, something that happened earlier as well that I wanted to mention is that I fell through a trap, which I don't think I've ever done on camera before, in this life at least. Oop. Oh, I shouldn't have. <laughs> Ugh, I hate traps in this game. More so than any other game. Centaur. I can't remember if I played the centaur animation. Uh-oh. This could be trouble. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was so risky. That was so dangerous. Oh, and here comes an orc. God, there's... There's only dark rooms. There's no bright ones, so I can't get anywhere safe. Oh, and it just the hits keep on coming. Okay, I'll wait, and then I can start exploring. I feel safe to explore now because my health will still regen. I love games with slow regeneration. I I really really do like them because, you know, games where there's a lot of regen, like eh, you know, right. Um, but like, I love games where they're willing to let you regenerate slowly. I love slow healing. A pecan staff. Yeah, I haven't used any of my staves. As I mentioned, I don't really uh, play with magic too much in really any game. Oop, there's a monster here. It's an orc. Okay, that's okay. So yeah, greedy orcs, as you see, they hang out around gold. I want to ensure that I'm just getting all the cash that I earn all the loot that I can um nice see as long as I can kill them quick enough the fact that I don't really have armor doesn't matter all right I'm searching up oh, there it is yeah so now there's just all dark rooms bunch of gold rattlesnake rut row Okay, cool. Yeah, rattlesnakes are still dangerous. They really never stop being dangerous. And another two-handed sword. If only I had four hands. Wow, yeah. Can't carry anything. Okay, what can I... I need one of these. Okay, good. I had a good meal there. What's my inventory? I feel safe to drop a single arrow. Magnesium wand. Interesting. And that's the level. Okay, cool. I guess we'll just keep on going. A troll. Oh, shoot. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so trolls, I believe, work similar to how they work in D&D, where they regenerate. So in this game, that essentially equates them, oh, we're rogue now. In that case, I'm going to take this armor off. Oh, a quagga showed up. The quagga hit me. Okay. I got to quickly... Dang. Let's switch swords. Quagga hits me. Oh, this could be bad. Okay. That was really risky. Um, Capital W. Put that on. Now I have real armor. Okay. So now I can actually take a few hits. I'm going to wait here. Okay. Feel good about that. Actually, I can just go. So I'm going to. So yeah, I've achieved the rank of rogue. I see no way down. Oh, that's what happens if you do the stair prompt. Because the stairs have its own button. This is... um. I recently watched a movie called House. House. Uh, it's a very odd Japanese horror movie. um, And it was made in a very odd time for movies in general. And it's... Well, there's that. Nice, it's some gold. And an equator. Oh, God dang it. Well, there goes my other piece of armor. Anyway. House was written, uh, was made in a time where, like... It, to me, it feels that, like... They didn't really know that they were making movies. And you can see that in really old movies, too, where the visual language just doesn't exist, and, like, the way that people make movies... like had to be invented and so there's a lot of weird early movies just because they just hadn't made movies before and so the visual language just doesn't exist because you know it hasn't been made yet and that's what this game really reminds me of you know because this game i fell in a trap but i'm on level 14 dang because this game predates like a use button you're stuck in a bear trap oh boy okay cool that was really dumb because this game predates, like, a use key and, like, common use of the mouse as well. It's all arrow keys and a keyboard. Wow, it's getting, like, a maze down here. This maze is a maze, dude. Wild. This is uh, now the farthest I've ever gotten in Rogue. And I did so by accident because this is the life I fell through two traps. Oh, great. An equator. See, so yeah, my AC is two, so it's very, very easy for most everything to hit me. Wide hallway. Don't trust that. Okay. I might actually beat it, although I don't want to jinx it. So death is far more likely than life in Rogue. In most of roguelikes in general. A bear trap. God. Who's putting these bear traps in here? Criminally. Uh, another equator. There's two of them. And a quagga. <laughs> Oh, man. And a potion of paralysis. Cool. See, if you drink poison, it'll be like, hey, you just drank poison. But here's what I did. So now I can know that I can throw that at an enemy and it'll allow me to get away. So if I ever have a really tense time, like when I'm fighting that centaur, uh, I can chuck a potion at it and rely on that. Let's try those. You begin to feel better. Oh, okay. So it was a healing potion. A yeti. I really love that they had to, had to, in fact, make the enemies all alphabetical. You know, ABC's a death, basically. And so, um, yeah, let's drop this. A tan potion. I would not drink uh, anything tan. Hmm. So now we come to an odd point because I'm not exactly sure where I should go. There was a another thing rather embarrassingly wherein I uh, 
was it down the one thing I didn't search that would kind of piss me off um it could also be on this side for that matter hmm oh it's a zombie I don't think I played the zombie animation so I will do that Hey, sorry, a little snafu of recording there. In case you didn't notice a small jump of time. See, zombies are, I believe they, they can curse you or inflict you with something. Oh, I didn't go down this way. That was dumb of me. Dead ends, huh? Wow. This is an extreme maze. Is this loss? Old me, I'm sorry. Wow. The art of rogues. Okay. That doesn't connect, are you serious? Jeez. I'm warming around someone's dwarf fortress in here. Dwarm Fortress, jeez. I've been uh, talking a lot for the past... Oh, Zambambo. I've been talking a lot for the past couple of days uh, just because I've been recording a lot of stuff and so my voice is kind of hibbly right now. Centaur. Jeez. I, uh... <laughs> It would be super embarrassing, but I might have to go off camera just so I can figure out where the hell I'm supposed to be going. A quagga. Isn't a quagga like a, ooh. Oh, I think that's the armor I dropped. Or no, didn't I drop it down there? Let's drop the ring I'm not wearing. Yes, it is. Oh, a, a wraith. Wraith, 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 wraith. All right, fight a wraith now. The wraith hit me. Injured the wraith, defeated the wraith. Nice. You know, for that matter, let's drop that uh, that again. Oh, jeez. Bear traps are so offensive. I hate stepping them in games and in real life. Another wraith. I've got to say, bear traps are my least... Is that another wraith? See, so yeah, I, uh, I haven't played this far in Rogue before, so I've never like gotten to areas like this. Is this what it's like? Like, I don't think that I can actually die now, because if need be, I can just go put on the, uh, the ring that makes it so I don't starve to death. Oops. Uh, I guess I should drop something. Well, actually, not really. Actually, let's drink it. Oh, I'm moving much faster. It's a haste potion. Cool. That's nifty. And I'm the champion now. Cool. Jeez. Um. Yeah, just because... So, I do a dumb thing with my recording, as I've uh, complained about in a couple episodes. I don't have a mic stand. I do, but it's very, very short. So uh, I can't search very effectively because one hand is full of... <gasps> oh, the Wraith just deleveled me. Jeez. Not a champion anymore. Now I'm just a warrior. Whoa, that's rough. So I'm actually going to come back whenever I... Uh, whenever I have found where I'm supposed to be going. Hey, I don't know what happened. I was exploring, looking around, and then this popped up. I think I just got killed by a troll, but hey, that's the best. That's the... That's... <laughs> uh, that's Friday Night Roguelikes. That was Rogue. Um, Scuzzin was a true god among men. 
that's just a really unfortunate end to it. But yeah, I got popped by a troll. Uh, that's Friday Night Roguelikes. I'll see you guys next week. Stay curious about the future. Next week, I'm going to play Moria, which is another roguelike based off of this. I feel like uh, this is a very, very lame ending, considering that I died off screen, and that's about as lame as it gets for anyone. But um, anyone who's played Rogue might have seen that coming. And now that you've seen it, now you can see it upcoming. Uh, go play Rogue yourself. I am, actually, let me show you. I am playing it on this, the Internet Archive. Um, it's a DOSBox emulator. But it's also just dang free. Like, it's a very popular common game. You can just go get it. It's very easy to find. Uh, so that was Rogue. Thanks for coming by. I've been Alfred. Stay curious about the future. Next week I'm playing Moria. Um, remember to get your medicine. I've been forgetting for a little bit, so, uh, you know. But yeah, that's, uh, that's Rogue. That was my best attempt.